So now we move to a CFA model. So you see I give it a name called CFA model one. Right? We have to define a model. So how do we define a model? We have all our factors, uh, all our items, you see. And this is our factor name. It is not in our data set. It is something we create. It is not in the data set. So I call the BD123, I call it BT. It has to be unique, right? The same for others. Okay. And this symbol equal to and this one is used to say reflective construct. Right? What would be the one for formative construct? So a lot of people are good that you know we should use PLS when we have formative construct. But you know it is very easy. Done. Formative construct done. Okay. What do we do? Like in reflective, we indicate the construct using this equal to than this. And in formative, we just instead of equal to use this symbol and then this. That's very easy, right? To do formative and reflective. Just the symbol. That's it. And other everything else remains the same. If we have one variable formative, we just represent, we just change the symbol of that one. Everything else remains the same. Let's say my EMP is formative. I just make it this. Done. Everything else remains the same. But of course not now. Can you select this part and run it? Mm. By the way, can any one of you tell me what we have here? We all know, I guess, but just tell it once again. These are the latent variables. The names of latent variables below uh, bes uh, on the left side and all the items representing the variable on the right side added with a plus symbol right that's it yeah that's the cfa model measurement model right we just run it but after we run it it is saved the model is saved but it didn't estimate it and on line 118 we have the estimation command so in in line 118 we are saying that give us model fit our function is cfa and here you have to define the model which model to use this is the model cfa model right that's why we call it cfa model the names have to be exactly the same here and here okay data you just say what is your data file name some people say that never call your data data but i like it and then estimator so this is where we say that mlr if it was maximum likelihood we will just write ml but we know our data is not normally distributed so we will write mlr okay that's it if you have binary variable, all that you have to do is just write DWLS. That's it. Okay. But for now, we will go for MLR. And here you have this common mimic M plus in a structural equation modeling community. It is believed that the output of M plus is the nicer one. So that's why we try to mimic the format of M plus output. What would you do if you have missing values and you want to keep it in the model? You cannot use MLR, right? Missing values, we have to always use ML. We will just write the common missing equal to ML, comma. That's it. All the missing values will be also estimated using maximum likelihood. But we don't have any missing values, so doesn't matter and maximum like good robust doesn't work with missing values okay 
So now just run the command. The model is estimated. As long as the stop button is there, you can't do anything. But when the red is gone, that means the model is estimated. The second line here, that is for multi-group uh, confirmatory factor analysis. But don't bother that. Leave it. We come to the summary one. On line 120, we have summary, right? Did the model work for all of you without error? Yeah. So on summary, we are saying, okay, give us the summary of the fit that we have estimated here, right? Fit measures like CFI, TLI, these things, present them. Give us also the standardized values. Give us also the R square values, R square of the endogenous variables. Okay. And then we run this. And these are our results. We go up on the top. Yeah, these are our results. The standard one is the maximum likelihood estimation. And the robust one is the maximum likelihood robust estimation. So it gives us both of them. What we will do is, if you remember, when we are in the factor analysis, we will look here. Factor loadings above 0 0.708, CFI TLI above 0 0.9, RMSA, RM, SRMR below 0 0.08. CFI TLI higher than 0 0.9, we are happy. RMSA below 0 0.8, good. SRMR below 0 0.8, good. The things are, the things looks nice, right? What about the standardized loadings? These are the standardized loading. All the latent variables and their loadings, right? What do you think about this one? Not good, right? When you see it's not good, what do you do? You take a note. We have to remove this one. Although explorative factor analysis says no problem, but it is a problem. So we just remove it. It's below 0 0.7 or it's very below 0 0.7 if it was like close to like these ones which are still close to 0 0.7 we would keep them but this is way below 0 0.7 we remove them these ones are good these ones uh yeah are okay i mean we can remove this but as long as they're above 0 0.6 i tr still try to keep it these ones are very good. Sometimes it could be a bit like a bad signal. <laughs> Why are they so good? These ones are also very good. This one. So, to be honest, we should remove the last one, LS5. We should remove BT3, LS5, and what else? Yeah, these two we should actually remove, okay? But I don't remember if I removed LS5. But the thing is that LS5 one, the life satisfaction measurement scale, that was a seminal study, uh, the one I have picked from, you know? And it is so well established that although we, if I, if I keep it, it's not like a like very big crime I'm doing. Okay, so I think in the end I decided to keep it, but BD3, that, that one I removed, okay? But I would say that just remove anything below 0 0.6. I mean, that's my recommendation to you, so we should remove this one too. But let's say, so what do you do? The good thing of R is that what you do is you only change here. You go to BD3, select it and remove. That's the thing you have to do. And then you just select it and run it. Okay? Then you select and run all of it. So we just remove the BD3 and we run it again. Are you guys following? So just run again. So only the first time is you have to put a lot of effort, but then you will see it becomes very easy. You know, one paper is about two years of project, normally. 
in my experience, it takes me about two years to start a paper and publish it in a good journal. Good journal. So in these two years, you have to maybe do the analysis a few times. So it's okay. It, it pays off to put some more effort the first time. And then you just read on and you have a look here. So you will see that, okay, now all of them are above 0 0.6 and cl more closer to 0 0.7. Yeah, so this is the model actually I used in the paper. And you see, when you want to predict, sometimes maybe you are interested in predicting the latent scores. The command is very easy. You just say predict and the CFA model, it predicts all the latent score. You can just run this command to see how it looks like. Yeah, you see, this is how it looks like, the predicted values. When I give head, it gives us only the five um, top six, but we can have all of them, right? We can have all of them. These are the predicted latent variable scores. Okay. And normally, if you remember, we earlier said that we want to, when we have too many items, we present the correlation matrix in latent variable level. So this is the command inspect. If you just write this command, you have this correlation matrix. You just copy it and paste it in your table. <laughs>